Hello, this is Scott. So welcome to my YouTube series on advanced analytics and data science. Today we're talking about time series. And in fact, we are going to be talking about moving averages specifically. Um, if you haven't joined me previously, you know that I normally do two things in these um, videos. I either cover a topic or an industry um, that data science can help you with, or I do a hands-on tutorial. And today is going to be a hands-on tutorial in R. Um, I also do these things in Statistica, Python, Spotfire, um, different different types of software. Um, again, today is in R. Last time, if you were with me, we covered time series decomposition and time series components um, in R07. And I've done a number of these, um, R01 through R06 um, previously. So one thing that I wanted to talk about briefly is that the, the package that I'm using comes from Dr. Hyman here. Um, and so one thing I noticed when I was getting ready for this particular tutorial is that I had an issue loading the package that I needed to load, which was FPP2. So I went in to, to download that, and I was coming up with a conflict in R. So it turned out I was using R 3.3, and I needed um, to update it because the package didn't support um, some things there. To make a long story short, I wanted to provide you a little hint in case you run into that problem, um, and that's this script here that you can use, um, and you can find this on the internet, but, um, but I found it quite handy. The ability to update R, you need to run this through the R console, not through R Studio, but uh, this will check to see um, what what version of R is uh, running and what's available, and then will actually allow you to update R on your system. So now I'm at um, uh, 3.5, the version that I'm running through uh, through R Studio, and I was able to download the FPP2. Um, library from CRAN and we're all good. So let me let me clear a couple of things. Let me just clear this console, uh, clean up a little bit. Uh, and we're gonna talk about um, moving averages. So what am I doing with moving averages? You know, we, we, we've got this, um, we've got this time series uh, and what we want to do is we want to be able to smooth out the series. So um, what I can do is I can use a time series of order M to smooth that out. And here's the actual uh, formula for the trend. Um, the smoothing method, it's 1 over M, where M is the order. Uh, the sum of J to the minus uh, K to K of uh, the series, Y to T plus uh, J. Uh, so that's a lot, but if we look at it in Excel, it's really pretty straightforward. Um, here is some data that I have um, by year. It's in sales data. So what does that formula actually look like for a five moving average um, order M? Then what that looks like is this formula here. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking one over M times the sum of the two previous periods, the current period, and two periods forward, all right? Um, and then I just copy that down, right? So this, this formula here, hang on, this formula right here, um, if I click on that, you can see that, it, again, it's the two previous periods, the current period, and the, the, few future, the two future periods. Um, basically just average together, all right? So that's a five moving average. Notice also that I don't have a moving average for the first two periods or the last two periods of the series. And as M increases, I get a smoother and smoother line. So for one, order one, it's just the series itself. And then for two, three, four, um, you start to smooth out. And really, if you're going to, to create a series, most of the time you're going to create a odd order. 
and we'll talk about that in a minute. We'll talk about a remedy to that to get to an even order, but we get an odd order again because this this would be symmetric, right? Two posts, two previous, and then the the, the current period all averaged together. If I have an even order, um, it's going to look a little bit different. So let me jump over to our studio uh, again. Let me load this this library right here. I can hit Control Enter, um, or I can run uh, from the console. I'm just going to plot this electric sales. This is available in this package. So let me just plot that data. And this is the same data we saw in Excel. We just now we've rescaled it, um, and of course the visualization looks a little bit better in R. To get that formula that I just created in Excel, here is the function MA, and I can run that. And you can see here, just like Excel, I have two missing values at the beginning and end, but I get my series um, as well. And then to plot the, the trended um, series over on top, um, I'm going to use this function auto plot, and let me just run that. And I can see that for 5MA, I get a much smoother line across the series. I'm taking um, some of the variability out of the series with this with this trended line. And again, as I increase M, smoother it gets. Ultimately, it'll be a, a straight line, um, basically similar to a regression line um, for the series. So. You can play with this, right? And I encourage you to do so, to, uh, selecting different values for M um, and calculating and see what is happening to to this line, to the smooth line. Um, and in fact, if you create a panel plot, you know that's uh, a great way to look at it's what what's happening. So again, normally we create these things as odd orders, and that's so that the um, the points will be symmetric. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, let's look at some even ordering and some, some actually taking a moving average of a moving average here. And that's what we're going to talk about next. So if I have a 4MA, right, the formula for a 4MA on this series right here, and this is the beer data that we've used previously, and I'm going to illustrate that in a minute in R. But you can see I'm only going one period back and I'm going the current period and two periods forward. So the point being there is this is this is non-symmetric because I'm, I'm waiting the future periods more than I'm waiting the, the past period um, in this calculation. So what's often done is to create a second um, moving average of this series. In other words, a moving average of the moving average. And for here, creating a um, two moving average of a four moving average, um, it's basically the, uh, the current period plus one period back. And that, that will allow me to get a symmetric series based upon the overall data. Um, Oh, so one thing is this is normally, you know, this, this notation two by four MA, um, this, this nomenclature is, uh, it literally means, you know, four MA followed by two MA. So that's the nomenclature, the four um, followed by a two uh, order moving average for this particular column. Um, it's also called a centered moving average of order four, right? Um, and this is because the results are, are symmetric. And we could basically do a uh, create a formula for this, but you're probably more interested in, in the code itself and the illustration within R. So we'll jump to that. Again, I'm taking the, the beer data here and um, as we did previously in, in one of the first um, videos that we we did. 
and then I'm going to create the four and the two. So I'm going to create the the, um, the four MA on the beer two um, of order four, um, and I'm going to essentially double that and create this two by four um, average. So let me just run that and that run, and then now let's look at a plot. And so now, uh, oops, sorry, I was gonna record, uh, uh, actually plot this, but I didn't. I ended up going to the, to the next example. So the next example is applying a order 12 um, to this electrical equipment data. And so what I've done here is I've created a 12, order 12 moving average for this data. And essentially this is the same thing since, since the, the variability is by month or seasonality is by month. Um, but what I'm getting here is a, uh, the same thing as a, a de-seasoned uh, data for this series. And then so a lot of this stuff actually um, the different techniques correspond to other techniques. So taking a 12 period moving average is the same thing as um, de-seasonalizing um, something that is seasonal by year, um, or taking the months essentially, 12 months. So hopefully that um, make sense and you can you have enough information that you can can play with this um, again we we talked about the formula we didn't really I showed the formula didn't really talk about it but you can uh, look at um, moving averages as, as well and so you can shift the different weights uh, on the different periods um, back again next time we're going to be talking about classical decomposition um, and I hope you can join me for, for that. Please send me an email if you have comments or suggestions, and I'll see you soon.